This week we have 4 videos for you to watch, with the 2 being released today and 2 being released tomorrow. And even though nobody asked for it, for some reason one of them is on Wigglytuff. But don't worry, I'm totally not just doing this to promote another video series which I think you all will love and is now uploaded, but hey, if you guys want to check it out, here's the link to that video. And again, for those of you waiting for the video for our main series, we got you covered for tomorrow. Anyways, we have Wigglytuff, the evolved form of Jigglypuff, who is one of the most popular Pokemon ever, considering that it's made four Smash Bros appearances, and was basically around for the entire second half of the Indigo League season of the anime, where it continuously harassed Ash and friends with its singing voice, and its ink pen to graffiti all over their faces. Unfortunately, much like Raichu for Pikachu, Wigglytuff doesn't get nearly the same amount of love as Jigglypuff. So how good is Wigglytuff actually yada yada yada? In Gen 1, Wigglytuff's one good stat is its HP, where it's actually pretty respectable at a beefy 140. For a Pokemon that looks like all fluff, Wigglytuff lives up to the tough in its name a little bit. Well, not really. It actually has pretty awful stats, with that of a base 45 defense and a base 50 special in Gen 1. And its other stats are all 50 or under too, which is at a mediocre 70. Wigglytuff sets in Gen 1 pretty much just took advantage of its normal typing. That gave it a few things. It got stabbed on three of the most powerful normal type moves in the generation, which it had the choice of using. Double Edge, an exceptionally hard hitting move, Hyper Beam, which you know, it's Hyper Beam, and the near ubiquitous Body Slam. As for the rest of its moves, it had a pretty wide move pool actually, which let it spread status directly instead of relying on Body Slam, and it has some pretty nice offensive coverage. I mean, that would be nice, if not for its atrocious special stat, which meant even its super effective moves usually only resulting in two hit KOs, or even less. Wigglytuff honestly got bots by everything. Gengar, Tauros, and Snorlax all destroy it, any fighting type will probably end it, and it got outclassed by Clefable, who, let's be honest, wasn't even that good anyway ways either, at least for this generation. Its one benefit was its ability to use counter effectively due to its high HP, but even then that was mostly cheese. So yeah, Wigglytuff, yeah sorry, not that good. Gen 2 gave Wigglytuff a pretty nice buff. It got 35 points in special attack which gave it some amount of attacking power. Its coverage actually meant something in Gen 2 because now it's able to hit everything neutrally pretty decently with Bolt Beam except for Lantern and Magneton, or it could just spam Double Edge. Honestly, its set was almost exactly the same, but despite its boosted special attack, there were even more counters which was pretty much anything bulky or anything that could do a decent amount of damage, like Suicune, Raikou, Ampharos, Titar, Umbreon, Tauros Fortress, yeah all of those Pokemon just shrugged off its moves and killed it. And once again Clefable outclassed it, now utilizing the new moves of Belly Drone to be a better attacking threat too. Man poor Wigglytuff, I guess that one episode in the anime where the alien Clefairies invade but are stopped by Jigglypuff's double slap is just plain wrong I guess. Anyways, Gen 3. Hey, maybe some abilities will help out Wigglytuff, right? Uh, okay. Alright, alright, fine. Alright, Wigglytuff became more of a support Pokemon this generation purely because it was one of the things it could actually do. With its move pool consistently expanding, it did get some access to moves other Pokemon wouldn't. Really though, those speed and defenses held it so far back. Its main strategy was based on getting around its awful stats, providing screens and wish support for the team, and using moves that don't rely on attacking stats, like counter and seismic toss. It actually can survive some pretty big hits like Heracross's choice Adam and Megahorn, so a correct prediction could mean the death of one of your opponent's biggest threats. But then again, you have a Wigglytuff on your team, so who's really losing here? Honestly, being a Wish supporter who does damage is a nice niche. Too bad someone else already did that and better. Even though Wigglytuff's wishes were big because of its high HP, with it being constantly outclassed, Wigglytuff found itself in Never Use. There, it was able to use its versatility better, but even in Never Use, it was still outclassed by Pokemon like Lickitung and Kecleon. And once again, the list of counters it has in other tiers is getting really long. And so we're honestly not gonna bother. Listen, if you could take a hit and do damage at all, you could beat Wigglytuff. Or if you had Taunt too. That also works. Alright, Gen 4. Listen, if there's one word you should take away from this video, it's outclassed. Many Pokemon would dream of having Wigglytuff's move pool, which allows it to support other Pokemon 10 different ways. But the thing is, there's Clefable, Chansey, and Licky Licky, and they all might not be as unpredictable, but they're still better. That said, Wigglytuff is a good supportive Pokemon, just for relative definitions of the word good. Passing Wish is always useful, and it also gets Stealth Rock, screens, status moves like Sing, 
Heal Bell, Knock Off. Seriously, go check out this thing's moveless. It's insane. It could be fun to use, but as we all know, competitive Pokemon isn't always the nicest of fun Pokemon. Gen 4 just added to the list of Pokemon looking to ruin Wigglytuff's fun. Whether it's by being better than it, like Licky Licky, or just beating it, like Rhyperior. And a lot of those Pokemon weren't even that dominant, being an underuse. So once again, Wigglytuff found itself in never use. But remember though, that's based on usage. And a simple question is, why would you even use Wigglytuff? And trust me, I know this video is being really monotonous, but just stick to the very end. Gen 5, Wigglytuff up is passed again by Licky Licky and the new Arduino. I mean, Audino. It did get a new ability, Frisk, which lets it scout other Pokemon items, but it really sucks for Wigglytuff that that's illegal with Seismic Toss because Seismic Toss is a Gen 3 tutor move. Even in never used, fighting types will almost always one hit KO Wigglytuff, so it's pretty obvious why it would die in overuse. Oh, yeah, and Ghost types wreck it too. If it's only two decent attacking moves, are Seismic Toss and Double Edge. Well, I think you can guess what happens again. Ain't nothing new, never used. In Gen 6, holy sh it got buffed. Quite a few buffs, actually. Firstly, Wigglytuff's special attack got buffed by 10 points, but much more importantly, it gained a fairy typing, and with a really cool new ability in competitive, which boosts its special attack by two stages each time a stat gets lowered. Because of that, Wigglytuff now mainly uses special attacks, and can potentially come in on defog users to boost itself due to defog's lowering evasion as well. Since Wigglytuff itself packs stealth rocks, that's a cool combination. That said, its stats are still awful. It's super vulnerable to being revenge killed because of of its awful speed, and it even gets one hit KO'd by Matang, Ponyard, and Clang with Iron Head. Yeah, it's not surviving overuse. And oh yeah, Special Walls destroy it too. It has a good niche, but its stats are just so, so bad. Down to PU it goes. Maybe Wigglytuff should consider resting like its unevolved counterpart. But in Gen 6 VGC, you thought it was just going to be me saying Wigglytuff got outclassed all video, huh? Well, joke's on you, this is where it actually gets interesting. Though I can't find any actual sources of Wigglytuff being used by a lot of players, one player in particular used it to win the Massachusetts Reasonals in 2014. Three-time VGC world champion Ray Rizzo. There's also a great article by Ray himself that talks about this, which I will provide the link to in the description down below. But unfortunately, the finals weren't recorded. But at least the semifinals were, and we can use Ray's write-up to learn what he was thinking. Ray was looking for a Pokemon that could deter Intimidators. Originally, he considered Bisharp well known for doing the same in singles, but ended up using Wigglytuff with competitive. Getting the idea from some Korean players and a friend of his losing to the same strategy. If there was no Intimidate, neither Bisharp nor Wigglytuff did much. But with Assault Vest, Wigglytuff could at least take advantage of its HP, now comboed with a higher special defense. We've been talking about Wigglytuff's move pool all video, and this is where it finally pays off. With Dazzling Gleam to hit both Pokemon, Thunderbolt and Fire Blast, Wigglytuff could dish out damage in a whole variety of types. Ray actually ended up using Hyper Beam as his last move, which was still stabbed since Wigglytuff never lost his normal typing. A stab boosted Hyper Beam still had the potential to take out a lot of Pokemon, or at the very least dent them. And it gives Wigglytuff options versus bulky Pokemon with weird typings like Rotom Wash. And Ray figured in situations where Wigglytuff was going to die the next turn anyway, Hyper Beam was a pretty good way to good out. Honestly, it's a really, really cool set. So how good was Wigglytuff actually? It was outclass. Wigglytuff has so many cool options, really. The defog bait set with rocks is especially fun, but its stats just suck and it has so much competition from other normal types with more bulk that it never ended up getting used. At least with Intimidate being everywhere in VGC, it can do some really hilarious stuff versus Intimidators. Although you didn't hear it from me, but I hear Milotic might do that even better. But whatever, if it fits on the team, it fits on the team. All right, promotional content over. If you learned anything from this, I hope it's that Ray Rizzo is cool as hell and you should go watch my Smash video. I know that I promote a lot this video, but I want to give a very genuine thanks to all of you. Being able to cover multiple games and release multiple vids in a week is something I can only do because of your support. Thank you so much to every one of my viewers for the continued support of our videos. And thank you, of course, to my incredible patrons for your direct support. And don't worry, your video is coming next. Anyways, as always, if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, comment on what Pokemon you want next. And watch my video. All right, that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.